Thank you, Dr. Shridhar, sir, for your kind introduction. I am Dr. Ramya. Uh, in the first place, I want to thank the organizing team and NOVO team for giving me this opportunity. And uh, uh, I, it's a proud privilege to be talking on this platform in front of the renowned physicians. So coming to my pro topic proper, pioneering the up upstream approach in diabetes management with oral semaglutide. And uh, this is a topic overview. Uh, I'm going to speak for the next couple of minutes uh, about the burden of weight in diabetes, addressing the sinister synergism with upstream approach, and place of oral semaglutide in managing weight in people living with diabetes, and ending with a case which uh, So coming to the word diabetes, which is a new word which are using uh, recently for the past one decade. Uh, diabetes is coexistence of both diabetes and obesity. It's a modern epidemic. And both are interrelated by multiple pathophysiological relations revolving around insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia. So one in 10 individuals have diabetes in India and four in 10 adults are obese. And 67% of the people with diabetes in India have obesity. And it's really surprising to know the, the mortality risk is increased by seven times if a patient has a diabetes along with obesity compared to non-obese and non-diabetic. And there is an entity in Asian countries like thin fat Indians. Though these individuals have normal BMI, they have abdominal adiposity which we generally talk as uh, lipolytically active, which is responsible for more of most of the components of metabolic syndrome. So this slide typically shows the interrelation between adiposity and diabetes. And it shows the various diverse risk factors, which include physical environment and also social environment leading to adiposity and thereby to diabetes. The physical environmental factors we all know, it's a poor dietary pattern, lack of physical activity, and social environment like uh, income inequality coming from a low socioeconomic status and mental health like sleep disorders, all this leads to adiposity. So adiposity itself at the level of uh, liver and muscle and adipose tissue leading to insulin resistance and thereby uh, beta cell decompensation leading to diabetes. In the other way around, diabetes, the medications, uh, uh, oral, oral uh, diabetic drugs causes weight gain and long-standing diabetes leading to neuropathy and lack of physical activity and recurrent hypoglycemias leading to increased food intake, all this leads to obesity. So both are interrelated in many ways. And now we all know uh, the complications due to increased body weight, both cardiovascular and non-cardiovascular. And uh, coming to the importance of upstream approach, the topic proper. So it was like uh, uh, we need a weight-centric intervention would definitely uh, cause the diabetes individuals, uh, type 2 diabetes, into remission and reverse the slowdown the disease and thereby decrease the both micro and macrovascular complications. We always see many patients walking into our OPD with a new answer diabetes and asking a single question, is our diabetes reversible? Can we go off the medicines? So there are few landmark trials of diabetes prevention, which I'm going to show in the next couple of slides. Uh, it clearly shows significant weight loss leads to remission of diabetes and thereby we can maintain without oral diabetic drugs. And this is one of the landmark diabetic prevention trial, diabetes prevention program study. So in this study, like uh, people are uh, in the borderline diabetes are characterized into, like randomized into two groups, one to a intensive lifestyle and another group to the metformin. At the end of the study, it's like the individuals with intervention lifestyle, significant intensive lifestyle has a decrease in the uh, incidence of diabetes by 58%, whereas it's only 38% in a metformin group. So in this study, it's clearly showed like change in weight from baseline. Uh, there is a correlation between significant decrease in the weight 
and decrease in the incidence or rate of people with the number of persons with uh, diabetes. It's a direct relation. With a progressive decrease in the weight, there is a decrease in the incidence of diabetes with a reduction in the body weight. And this is also same, the look ahead trial, uh, which is uh, done to see the between the intensive intervention lifestyle to prevent the onset of CV outcomes. And from this study, it clearly showed with uh, decrease in the weight loss from more than 2% to 15%, uh, there is also a, a direct relation. The more the weight loss, the more the decrease in the HbA1c, which is shown in the y-axis. It is the same thing. On the y-axis, it's a fasting plasma glucose and the x-axis in the weight loss. So there is a direct relation. So even with a modest weight loss, there is a significant improvement in the glycemic parameters. So this is also another important uh, uh, diabetes prevention trial, diabetes remission clinical trial. So it clearly showed uh, this light yellow uh, orange bar is like at the end of one year and this uh, slightly dark color at the end of two years. So with a significant increase, uh, decrease in the weight from five kgs to 15 kgs, there is the bar uh, which is shown here, there is 86% decrease in the incidence of diabetes. So at the end of this time, and it is also maintained at the end of second year. So 46% of the patients in the intervention achieved remission. So greater the weight loss, greater the remission, and more the weight loss is sustained, yes, uh, we can prevail, prevent or delay the onset of diabetes. Coming to the evidence approach for weight management, one is the lifestyle modification, we all know, dietary therapy, physical activity and behavioral therapy, and pharmacotherapy. So Orlistat, this is in the market for the many years, and liraglutide, and semaglutide injectable, and uh, naltroxone and fenteramine, which we generally use them at a uh, lesser. So the weight loss with the surgery, laparoscopic adjusted gastric banding, and rho and y, when we consider with a morbid obesity with a BMI more than 45. Coming to like the unmet needs in the weight loss therapy. So whatever the therapy we use, we need to consider the weight loss should be sustainable. And it should address mainly the decrease in the adiposity rather than muscle mass and the concomitant effect of other anti-diabetic drugs. So we need to look for a molecule which can address the multiple effects, not only the weight. So we have GLP-1 analogs. They are, we, are, they are, we are using them for the past 10 years. And, but only after the uh, results of the major landmark trials, leader trial, CV outcome, uh, they became a game changer in the treatment of diabetes. There is a paradigm shift in the glucocentric approach to cardiocentric approach in individuals with diabetes. So this GLP-1 analog, besides like uh, managing glycemic control, it has like a holistic approach. Decrease the, we have a CV benefits and promoting weight loss with less hypoglycemia and uh, it is, uh, the special thing is, it is approved for a wide variety of patients, especially elderly due to less risk of hypoglycemia and cardiovascular individuals with coronary artery disease, which clearly showed there is a decreased uh, mortality and uh, decrease in the progression of CKD in individuals with diabetes. The mechanism of the action, which is only uh, shown at the level of uh, uh, hypothalamus, it acts directly at the area prostrema and parabrachial nucleus projections and indirectly to area prostrema and NTS pathway causing satiety. And coming to the like uh, uh, important point I want to specify here is, it is the uh, adipose tissue which is more loss with semaglutide, which is clearly shown. Uh, the decrease in the body weight is mainly due to fat mass. It's like more than 2.6, whereas the lean mass decreased by 1 kg. So by using oral semaglutide, there is a decrease in the adipose tissue, and the total decrease in the body weight is due to decreased intake as the resting metabolic rate is less. And coming to the series of pioneers trials, uh, which uh, uh, are done for the past couple of years, uh, to see the CV safety of oral semaglutide. And 
the pioneer one is comparing different doses of oral semaglutide with placebo and at each and every dose including the 3mg there is a significant uh, uh, good glycemic control most of the individuals are able to achieve the hba1c less than 7% uh, and but coming to the weight loss there is no significant statistically significant weight loss with 3mg but uh, with 7mg and 14mg there is a significant weight loss of more than 5% and the pioneer uh, trial 8 it's like comparing different groups of oral semaglutide with insulin and this study is done for complete one year and this clearly showed at the end of 26 years 26 weeks sorry and at the end of 52 weeks there is a sustained weight loss what we need is it's not an acute weight loss we need to have a sustained weight loss so one out of two people achieved the weight loss of five percent and the weight loss is even sustained. And uh, the other thing is change in the body weight at the end of treatment. Uh, so across the all Pioneer trials, when compared to empagliflozin in Pioneer 2 and compared to citagliptin in Pioneer 3 and including liraglutide in Pioneer 4, there is a significant weight loss with oral semaglutide, uh, which is more with oral sima rather than other drugs. So there is up to 5 kg weight loss seen in Pioneer series of trials. Um, this is what we are discussing. The, uh, the change in the body weight is sustained over time up to 1 to 2 years. And another thing is age is an, uh, another important factor. In the series of trials, they divided the people into three groups based on the age, less than 45, more than 65, and between 45 to 65. Irrespective of age, uh, there is a consistent weight loss in all age groups. That is shown in this uh, series of trials. And uh, the background medication, even if the patient is on other drugs like other metformin, sulfonylurea, or any other SGLT2, there is a consistent weight loss regardless of the background medication. And this blue bar is oral semaglutide. Across the all trials, 3, 4, 5, and 6, there is a consistent weight loss, uh, this, uh, uh, irrespective of the background medication, there is a sustained weight loss. So the change in HbA1c across all the series is like uh, up to 1.5%. Uh, so this is what uh, our uh, American Diabetic Association 2022. So there is a shift in the treatment from 2017 depending upon the comorbid conditions and also based on the weight. So this, this half, depending upon the CKD, CHF, and uh, CAD, the drug of choice is always GLP-1 analog or SGLT2. And coming to the people with diabetes without any comorbidities, the second group is if weight. If weight is a concern to minimize the weight gain or weight loss after metformin and lifestyle management, GLP-1 analog is a first choice. Only if it is uh, uh, not tolerable, then SGLT2 be the other choice. Coming to the case here, so a 46-year-old gentleman who had like a sedentary job who uh, with a poor dietary pattern eating lots of sugary snacks sorry and with a strong family history of diabetes and coronary artery disease so he is currently on metformin and sulfonylurea and his hba1c was 8.1% with a grade 1 obesity and body weight of 88 kilograms with uh, early hypertension and elevated cholesterol. Uh, but here the albumin creatinine ratio is normal. So coming to this patient, at diagnosis, he was initiated on metformin and diet and exercise. Over years, we know there is a progression of diabetes and there should be a multifactorial treatment to prevent the complications. So this patient at the end, like currently, he was on a regular lifestyle intervention, uh, walking like uh, two to three times a week 
on metformin 2 grams and glimiparid 4 milligrams. So in the past three years, he has a sedentary lifestyle. So the concern is, so he is initially maintained on metformin on lifestyle, later initiated on glimiparid with metformin. Over three years, he developed the symptoms of atherosclerosis mildly, like shortness of breath, fatigue over the past six months with progressive weight gain and hypoglycemic episodes. And mind you, there is a strong family history of coronary artery disease. So looking at this patient at 46 years and 49 years, there is no significant change in the HbA1c, but there is increase in the BMI and weight and all the metabolic components like elevated blood pressure, elevate dyslipidemia, elevated cholesterol and uh, LDL. And there is a progressive increase in the albumin creatinine ratio, which was initially less than 30. It is now 40 and there is a decrease in the EGFR. And so this is a profile of this patient. So he was initiated at uh, diagnosis when his HbA1c was 8.1 on metformin and at the end of in one year the HbA1c was at 7.8 later it progressively increased so the treatment decision at this point like 8.3 uh, it's better for him to be on sulfonylurea and metformin or GLP-1 analog so he was started on GLP-1 analog with statin therapy at the end of three years. So by on, when the patient on GLP-1 receptor analogs for three years, there is a significant decrease in the HbA1c from 8.3 to 6.8 and the weight loss of around 12 kgs and decrease in the BMI and all the metabolic parameters also improved. So Looking ahead, downstream approach, he was diagnosed with diabetes, initiated on metformin, and with a progression of disease, at the end of three years, he was initiated on oral semaglutide, and thereby preventing the further cardiovascular events and further complications. Looking back, if he was initiated on metformin with GLP-1 analogs at initiation itself, metformin and diet and exercise and oral semaglutide and statin six years ago. It's not at the end of three years after poorly managing with uh, sulfonylureas and metformin. If he would be initiated with semaglutide at initiation itself as considering with obese and high risk uh, individual with underlying cardiac history. So we are uh, uh, able to prevent the mild coronary artery disease CAD in this individual and prevent further complications. So uh, upstream approach, like uh, if he is a suitable patient with a high cardiovascular risk and obese, it's better to initiate on oral sima instead of uh, other drugs. Though the summary is there is an exponential rise in the incidence of diabetes and along with diabetes, there is an increase in the obesity and adopting an upstream approach towards weight management can lead to multiple clinical benefits, preventing both the micro and macrovascular complications. And the strategies in current weight reduction are not sustainable. By using GLP-1 analogs, there are various benefits beyond HbA1c control in type 2 diabetes, and they have a valuable place in an upstream approach to diabetes. Thank you.